Hi there, Stephanie Cameraman, the Stock Whisperer, here with this week's Dark Pool Insights for February 17th, 2020. We had some great swing setups last week off those Dark Pool prints, but we got the most massive prints this week on so many different stocks and ETFs. I want to jump right into those trades before we review last week's swings. I want to share some of the trades we took this week in my live bootcamp class. It was a really great week to learn how to trade and my traders rocked it this week. I'm going to show you some of our trades, but first let's go to American Airlines. How often do we get a 9 million print? Holy moly, massive. February 10th, it came in. 9 million at 28.33. This is what I posted. Something big is going on here. And uh, my traders in my room started jumping in on this. Andrew, I took a flyer on the AAL calls. This week's 29s, I'm in for 34 cents. And I posted that it was strangle time. Yeah, whenever we get these big prints, on these stocks. I really love to strangle them. Look, I don't want to guess if it's buying or selling, but we love to strangle when we're unsure of the direction. And you can see Adam the Mole put on a 27 puts and the 30 call strangle. Great job, Adam. As you're going to see, that worked out really, really well. Massive prints create massive splashes. And we've seen this so many times with AAL, we actually made money on both sides because the splash is huge. And what it is, is they usually splash it in the opposite direction of the true intended move. So they'll move the stock up if they're selling and then they'll slam it down. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you the price action that happened after this print. So what we like to do is we like to add on to the call side and roll all the way up until the last trade usually doesn't work out. So Andrew, uh, Andrew got 200% ROI on those calls, by the way. Dr. P jumped into the 30 calls. Uh, you can see it moved up to about $30 on February 11th. Kahuna took the 31 calls. Adam rolled his calls, but he took 173%. ROI on his first trade, which automatically made his strangle profitable. Palladin also took his pro uh, his profit. Nathan took a day trade on it. Uh, Paul, AKA the alien, scaled out of his trade. Nathan, Dr. P, Keith all bought some calls at the end of the day. This was splashing massively. Look at that move up it had. So the next day, guess what? It went up even more, but guess what we got? We got a brand new big print on February 12th. Not as big as the first one, it wasn't 9 million, but 750,000 shares is still a lot. It printed at $30.14. So what I teach my traders to do is use it at a level, use it as a level moving forward. So if we stay above it, we're gonna stay bullish, but if we go below it, that's when we can go short. So my traders have learned that it could be profit taking or selling at the top. So they do like to start to take profits. So Andrew, um, yep, he sold his AAL position. Dandy wrote the print is synthetic, which some traders um, have a problem with, right? Whenever there's an options trade tied to the actual trade on the stock, they won't take it because they think, oh, there's an option trade, they're using it, so they're not naked in their position, option trade. Uh, but what I've learned is it's still good. I don't care if it's synthetic or not, all right? I'm gonna use it as a level and I'm gonna show you as how I traded on it in just a moment. But in the meantime, uh, Keith took profits on it. Uh, Dr. P wrote, it's dumping hard in the last 15 minutes. Nathan took 80%. And you can see there's a wick at the top of that candle on the 12th. Yes, sellers came in at the end of the day. And a very popular pattern when it gets really far from the four and the eight EMA is it loves to retrace back down to it. 
All right, it's a really big pattern. So as a swing trader, I don't like to go long when it's really far away. Your best entries are down here, okay? These are always gonna be your best swing trades and then you always wanna take profits, wait for the retrace. But in this case, we had a print. So the next day, what do you think happened? News came out, eight planes put on lockdown at Heathrow over coronavirus fears. Yeah, passengers aboard some airlines, okay, were put on lockdown, United. So that's gonna affect uh, quite a few, if you listen to the fundamentals, right? I'm gonna be honest with you, I really don't listen to the fundamentals at all. Uh, we have Jane reporting the news. I just went short. I bought AAL Lottos, 2850 puts expiring next week. Why? Because we went below $30.14. That's where that big print was. So we splashed up a little bit and then we came down and that's always when you're gonna wanna jump in and buy some puts. So my traders got out of there. Uh, they all jumped in with me, by the way. And then you can see as it started to move down, we all started to take profits. It was fantastic. And the reason that I took profits and I rolled to the uh, 27 puts for February 28th is because we could bounce off that eight EMA. We came all the way down to it. And I wanted to stay in this trade because, I mean, how do you feel if you exit out of all your puts and then on Tuesday we gap down big? So instead, I took my profits on the more expensive 2850 puts, paid 17 cents for them, and I sold them for 26, and I bought much cheaper 27 puts for it. So I, I don't think this trade is over. No, not by a long shot. So here are the levels that I want you to watch. Yeah, this is going to be a massive move. We are only getting started here. So here's how we're going to trade it. Oh, and here are some more posts from my traders there. They did, they did really well on those puts. But here's how we're going to trade it. We are going to be bullish above 30.50. All right, even if it goes above that 30.14 level, closes above that, yeah, I, I might jump in. Uh, with a toe or two, but clearly above 30.50. And then if we break below 28, all right, that's gonna be uber bearish because we're gonna go below that original 9 million print, 28.33. But you can see the retracement, right, that happened here. So, yep, are there gonna be buyers and bounce it up on Tuesday or are they gonna take it straight down? So. Here are those amazing high probability trade setups, but there's one more, okay? One more, this retracement trade to the prints. So I'm gonna be bearish below 29. Target's gonna be 28.50, 28.33. Watch and see if it can stay above that. If we do dive below 28.33, look out below. This is gonna be uber bearish. And if we look at the seasonality chart, you can see that over the past six years, American Airlines usually goes below, uh, usually goes down from February to May. Then we usually have a little bit of a pop-up and then it, it has a bigger crash into October. October seems to be the best time to buy this stock. So I like when both seasonality and the dark pool work tandemly. I will take a trade just on the prints alone, but I will never take a trade on seasonality alone. But when they're both together, it's so powerful. All right, now we're gonna move on to another trade. This is the sneakiest prints this week. I'm sure none of you heard of this, BBJP. What is this? This is an ETF, and I never knew about it. The, the only reason I know about it is it appeared in my block trade indicator and I looked it up. I spotted these massive blocks coming in three days in a row. Look at this, 2.3 million right here, right? Almost 2 million. This thing barely trades any volume every day. 
Look at this, 1.1, 1, 1 million, 1.6, huge. Look at all these trades. So of course I posted this out in my live trading room and on my dark pull up and look at the uh, chart, daily chart. You can see, right? Massive volume. Yeah, how do you sell Japan or buy Japan without anybody knowing? Well, you do these ETFs that nobody looks at. And here's the dark pool, we are way below. So I was teaching my boot camp class this week and I really wanted to teach them how to put on a strangle and add to the right side. So we practiced on EWJ. Why EWJ? Well, this is a Japan ETF and this one has a lot of volume every day and it has options. BBJP has no options. So I'm on the microphone all day long, calling out trades for my traders to get in. So I called this trade out to put the strangle on, the 57 puts and the 61 calls. And you can see Christina. By the way, Christina, congratulations. She is our trader of the week. She has been rocking it actually for weeks now, but she really killed it in the, in the uh, day trading challenge on Friday. So great job, Christina. So she did uh, the EWJ strangle. Again, we're, we're doing it on paper so that we learn how to do this. And Gordon, awesome job also. Uh, he jumped in, he did it a little bit different. He bought the 6150 calls, but he also bought the 57 uh, puts. And what I teach my traders to do is add on to the right side, because you can see right here, we didn't know if they were buying or selling, and we were kind of stuck in between the four and the eight EMA on the daily chart. And I always tell them, if we go up the next day, we'll add to the calls. If we go down the next day, we'll add to the puts. And, and what happened the next day is we went down. So we added to our puts. We bought the 58 puts. Gordon wrote up, EWJ puts look happy. And uh, Tosh wrote, are you still holding off on adding more to the EWJ puts? And that's when I told her, yep, we are buying them right now. Just wanted to watch in the morning. See, we came down to this 100 moving average right here. And I wasn't sure if we were gonna come down and bounce back up to the four and the eight or were we gonna just melt through it. And you can see that we did end up melting and we couldn't quite bounce up. And as soon as we started to turn down, we added, you could see Gordon uh, bought the EWJ puts. Yep, when I called it out. And Simone had a question. Uh, when you add to the right side of the strangle, do you then close the other side, right? Were we supposed to close our calls? And my answer is no, don't ever do that. We want one side to go to zero. It's our insurance policy. If this is a splash and they pull it up next week and we go above all those prints, we want to still be in those calls. We would add to the call side, be more aggressive with shorter dated options and a closer strike price, all right? So this is the, the, the best... Uh, way to learn how to trade, you know, because it's 70 hours, it's all live trading, and my traders can ask me questions as we're putting the trades on. My next class is May 18th, by the way, if you're interested, just shoot me an email and I will give you more information on how to join. So the next day, it moved lower. Yup, and guess what? Those puts worked out really well, but we came down to another really big moving average, the 120 simple. And computers are usually programmed to buy there. So I decided to sell three quarters of our 58 puts and then roll to cheaper puts. And you can see um, E-Man took his profits, except he got in the 58, 50 puts. E-Man, he actually did a better trade than I did. Yeah, good job there, E-Man. Yeah, he got aggressively, uh, a little bit more aggressive on the price, the 58.50. So when you go from out of the money to at the money, that's gonna be your best ROI. Although he still did really well, but that was really impressive, E-Man, good job. So um, here, I wanna show you the charts. Yep, so you can really see how these options work. This is the original strangle. And you can see the 57 puts that we're still in right, went from like 20 cents uh, up to 38 cents. And the puts that we bought for 22 cents went down to six 
cents. We're not going to sell them because if it were to move up, these would gain, but we don't care if they go to zero. What's really important is, and by the way, we paid, um, what do we pay for those puts? Yeah, I believe we paid 22 for both of them, the puts and the calls. Well, we have a lot of time on these. These expire March 13th. So notice that when we added, right, we added closer expiration. We went to next week's February 21st. Now, the only thing that's not great about next week is we only have four days. Normally, it's a five-day week, but we are off on Monday. But I still expect it to, to have a decent move. And again, we took our profits. We added here to the 58 puts, and then we took profits, and then we, we rolled into the 57 50 puts so they're much cheaper and what i like to do on the roll is i buy less contracts we can't lose on this trade right now that's the best part so if you're not in this trade yet here's the trade setup moving forward again i'm always going to be bullish if we go above 60 what if this is the splash if not bearish below 58 50. all right if we go below 50 that's going to be uber bearish. You can see this is a very long trend line going back to October. We've bounced off of it already once right here. So I do expect a, a little bounce here. And then if we can't hold, look out below. All right, that's going to be really the big level to watch. All right, let's move on to the next one. We're still in earnings season, and I'm sure many of you are watching Canopy Growth. CGC is the stock symbol on Friday. It had an earnings report. So is knowing the earnings report inside and out going to help us trade this? How many of you read these reports? I'm going to guess that three quarters of you probably read this and put on a trade according to how the earnings were. No, 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 no. Don't do that, okay? That info is only good for analysts. It's really going to mess up a trader's mind. I mean, I've seen really good reports and the stock goes down. I've seen bad reports and the stock goes up. The best way to trade this is to draw some really good trend lines and follow the dark pool. So I've done that for you guys. Here are the recent prints on CGC. We don't get too many of them, so this is key, and this just happened. 300,000 at 1988, and that was before earnings. And 450,000 at 2045. So we are above the prints. So our trade setups are gonna be bullish above 24, and those are our targets, and bearish below 1975. Five. Now, we could have a retracement trade to the prints, but there's a lot of moving averages in this area, so I really didn't want to entangle you in that. However, if we do pull down and we do go below, that's when this will get really ugly and we'll probably test support from November. But if we can push our way above this upper trend line, above 24 i can see really nice rally on this possibly going up to that 200 simple moving average all right so i'm excited let's move on to the next one yeah walt disney it's not every day that we get big prints on this okay that's why this is so important we had a 1.1 million print this week 140 58 here's my post but wait there's more we got three more on February 13th. Wow. All right, let's show the chart and the setups. So we're kind of in this little wedge. We could go uh, below 138 or we could go above 142. So we're going to be bullish above 142. And my first trade setup would be to go, you know, to the top of this channel. And then if we broke above, look out, we'd be hitting 150. But the bear trade, we are below the prints right now. Um, the next level down, 138. So if we do go below that, we'll most likely go to the bottom of this uh, channel trend line right here. And then of course, if we go below that, we'll most, we'll most likely go to the VWAP area. That yellow line, that's where most of the volume has occurred in the, uh, the daily chart. 
Yeah, so we'll watch for that. Oh wait, I have another one for you guys. Wow, massive prints coming in on Hanes. And there is bullish seasonality. Yep, starting in March. But we're always gonna follow the prints. So we actually had two sets, intermarket sweeps, you guys. That's very aggressive at 1390. We are well above that. So here's our trade setup moving forward. We're gonna be bullish above 1480, and we'll be bearish if it does turn down, if this was a splash, and it goes below 1390. We'll be bearish below 1380. All right, for Haynes. I got another one for you on the biggest ETF out there, the SPY. I always want to give you the next levels to watch because this is the biggest ETF. And if the SPY is going up, in general, a lot of our favorite stocks are going up. And if it's going down, vice versa. Let me tell you, we got a new dark pool level this week, a really big one. Friday just came in. 337.02, 9 million. This is pretty big. We haven't had a big level in quite a while, okay? So pay attention. We are going to be bullish above 337.50. That's a major level. And we will turn bearish below 336. So before I get to this week's setups on the slide, I just want to go over last week's because a lot of our targets got hit, but a lot of them have not been hit yet. So these trades are still on. So let's start with uh, XOP. Bearish below 1875. We kind of tinkered around with that. I am still watching to see if we will hold below on that. So, you know, don't take your eyes off that. Really big level of dark pool starting at 1931 and working its way up to almost 20. So we are still below the best of prints. Apple hit one target to the upside. USO hit one target to the downside. The SPY hit two targets to the upside. Verizon hit all three targets to the downside. Silver has not moved yet. Don't take your eye on that. I'll put it on the next slide for you. UNG was really the only toughie that went below 14 and didn't hit a target. Got stopped out on that one. Bank of America hit one target to the upside. SLB did not break above or below. So we're still going to watch that one this week. And VWO hit one target to the upside. So here are this week's AAL, EWJ, CGC, Disney, HBI, and The Spy. And then I want you to keep track of Silver, Schlumberger, and XOP for this week. There you have it. That's your insights, your dark pool insights for this week. Until next time, happy trading. My secret